Hi, this is Michael Tonus here to teach you how to draw block letters. To start with, you'll need some materials and you'll need to set up your paper for drawing the block letters. So, beginning with the materials, um, I'm using a Prismacolor ebony pencil and a kneaded eraser, and I have also a Sharpie that I'll be using later. So, in addition to your paper, you can use a ruler to set up these lines, and I've created them one and a half inches with a quarter inch gap. So you may want to pause for a second and set up your paper before we begin. Now let's begin with the A, B, C, D, E. We're going to have to place five letters on this first line. So we're going to find the center being the C and we're going to go ahead and draw that C right here in the middle of our row. And then we're going to move over a little bit to the right and draw a D and an E just like that. And we're going to work backwards. We're going to place the B and the A. Now that happened pretty quick. Feel free to stop the video and go ahead and fill in that first row. Same thing here with the second row. We're just going to move right along and we're going to find the center and to the left we're going to draw the I. Nope, in fact I didn't get that to the right place. The I should be on the right of the center and the H should be on the left of center. So don't worry if you make a mistake, just go ahead and erase and fix it. That's why we have an eraser. So we'll go working backwards here to place the G and then the F and make a couple adjustments. Now we'll come in and do the J and now the K. All right, so if you need to pause and catch up, great. Otherwise, let's just keep moving on. Now we'll do the N and the O. And we'll come in here after the O. We'll put in the P and the Q. And just sketch these in. Um, we just need to get a basis down for all the letters. So here we're going to put the M in. And as you can see, these pretty much just line up below the letters of the uh, F through K row. Six letters in that row, six letters in this row. Now the R, S, T, U, V. T is the center. So I'm going to put the T right in the middle. And for the U, we're going to do a sort of a gentle uh, semicircle on the bottom. And the V. Very simple and straightforward. The S, you can think of it as flowing around two circles or an eight. And we'll just flow it right around that eight right there. See that? Circle, circle. And now for the R, it looks like a P with a leg kicking out. Just like that right there. That uh, kick out on the R is a lot like the K. So last row here, we'll do the X first. Trying to get that to cross in the center, make adjustments as needed. The Y, similar to the V. And our, our Z. And come back here and place the W. Now that W lined up quite well with the spacing, because it's sort of a wide letter. I am feeling that the Y here is a little tight, so I'm going to move these letters over. I'm just going to give that a little more room. Let's go ahead and erase that. Give a little more room for that Y and that Z. So there you have the basic stick letters, and uh, you can come back here and see now how we're going to block these in. Again, if you uh, haven't gotten here to catch up with us, pause and then resume. But uh, you can see we're essentially just taking the stick letters and we're making them into wider rectangular parallelogram type shapes. Again, same with the B.
that small center there of those shapes. Now for the C, just kind of roll around there and uh, make a small circle in the center. Now we've got to cut across here. I think we're going to cut across a little bit of an angle like that, both downward and um, both up and down. All right, the D is pretty straightforward also. We've got a rectangle here, and then we're going to find the center of that. Let's see, we're looking at the thickness of that. It should match the thickness there, and it looks good. Now we're going to come around. And uh, the center of that's going to be basically a half circle, something similar to the center of the C right there, like half of the circle of a C, center of the C. All right, the E moving right along. Again, it's a rectangle with a couple of rectangles sticking out to the right. And then one smaller rectangle coming out the center on the right. So now let's go ahead and continue with the next row and uh, we'll just square up this uh, part of the F. It's going to be just like the E except missing the bottom rectangle. There we go. Just like that. Now the uh, G is a lot like the C. We're going to use the same technique here and get the outside done. We're going to find a center circle for it. We're going to cut that uh, piece right there. And uh, now we're going to try to notch in a little piece right there. So this is where it gets a little tricky. How do we make that work? So I think what we need to do is make that a little taller and come back up on the top a little bit so that we have a little piece cut in right there. So we'll just uh, clean that up a little bit and refine it. So we've got that center circle. We've got a little piece which cuts back right there into the center, which is similar to the part that's sticking out the F. And uh, we'll straighten that up a little bit. And we'll cut that piece right there. There, that's looking like a good G. See that little part of the F and that little part right there? And they're sort of meant to be similar. All right, now for the H, this one should be an easy one. Got a couple of vertical rectangles and a little horizontal piece coming between them. Again, playing off that thickness from the F and the G. Um, again, the I should be pretty straightforward. All right, now for the J, we've got to figure out how to get this uh, little tail on the J. And right now, with that crossbar in the center, like the I, we're going to go ahead and try to get that tail on the J. You can see that doesn't really give us a lot of room, but we're going to try to cut it just like that B right there. And uh, that gives kind of a weak tail on that J. So what we're going to do instead... We're going to get the tail right, and we're going to cut that little little hook in there that's a lot like the B, and then and then we'll move the straight up and down of the J over slightly. Pull that a little bit off center. All right, now for the K. Got our vertical rectangle. And now we've got some angled rectangles coming out. We're going to move right up to that line, come over, and come back down. And then we're going to kick this one out here, trying to keep the tip from going further out than the uh, edge of the letter on top. And there we go. We have the L done. Now let's come in and do the M. We're going to need to leave a little room in the middle for the middle part of the M, so we're going to make this letter just a little wider. And I'm uh, going to go ahead and secure that little 
V right there and then fill in the bottom part of that. Excellent. Now the N Got the two verticals. Again, we're widening this letter up just a little bit to give us some room in there. And that's one reason you didn't want to have the letters too close together to begin with. You need a little room to, to add as needed. All right, so put a little circle in there like we did on the C and the G and to get that round feeling going. And then we should be done with that one. Now on to the P. Again, it's kind of just like the B. Trying to keep that uh, consistency going in the letter shapes. And a Q, it's another circle, little center circle. And now we've got to figure out how to get this piece in here. We're just going to draw it right on top for right now and let a corner of it stick in there. And uh, I'll erase that and let you see how that looks. So we're just going to have a little corner piece right in there. All right, now down here for the R, kind of like a P with a with a K kick on it. Just like that. Just looking to keep the shapes similar, um, common shapes with the other letters. Okay, so remember those little circles we had for that eight? Well, we're going to go ahead and draw some centers and use those to piece together this S right here. You can see how easy that is, right like that. Piece of cake. Uh, S's used to be really hard until uh, I just figured out really that you just had a, like an eight. And uh, you just needed to let those curves flow right around uh, from one side of the eight into the center circle of the other eight. All right, T, a very easy letter. Nice after that S to have an easy letter. And now the U, we'll just do a little curve there and a nice gentle curve down at the bottom. And the V, also a pretty easy letter. It's kind of like an upside down A, so we want to have it the, have the same sort of form going. We'll go ahead and pull that line down to the bottom and see how that works right there. And there you have your V, just like an upside down A. All right, one more row to go. Really, it's just a bunch of rectangles and parallelograms. So here we have the W. We're going to go ahead and let that come all the way down. And it's similar to an upside down M, but you can see that the way the, uh, the angles are, it's different. So um, we'll just fatten this up here, just like that. Clean up those bottom edges. Let's erase some of the center part so we can look at it and see if it's got the right shape. And it's pretty good. So we'll go ahead and move on to the X. And a couple of parallelograms. No magic there, just, just some drawing. And the Y. A little tricky, but uh, just keep working those thicknesses. And uh, you come down with a stick here, stick there, and a little rectangle at the bottom. Just check the thickness. You want it to be roughly the same as the other letters. And last but not least, we've got our Z. So we want to find out the start and stop points on that. And yeah, your Z is going to be very much like um, very much like the N, except we're going to try to give it some pointy ends. Yeah, I think the best bet here is just to cut off those tips. Otherwise, it gets too big for us and uh, make it very much just like an N on its side. 
All right, so there is our Z. This would be a good place to pause the video so you can finish drawing in your letters before the next step, which will be inking. Um, you can see again the Z, how it's like the N. So in a moment, we'll start inking. Okay, here I've got a Sharpie pen, and I'm going to just start pulling these lines carefully, uh, adjusting the position of my arm and hand as I need to, to draw the lines at the angle I need to. Notice how we just move the hand around. You can use your wrist or your arm motion to do this. Gently flow around the B there, and let's then make the smaller center parts. You can see how much nicer it looks when it's inked in, and uh, this gives you a chance to make some minor corrections. So uh, take care in this step. Move your hand to a position as needed to get the curve that you need. And you can see this curve of the D I'm doing in multiple stages, positioning my hand each time to get the part of the curve I need. Now the one thing about a hand-drawn letter is uh, it's not going to be uh, exactly like a perfect computer type, but that little bit of extra imperfection a little bit of imperfection in the letters helps it to uh, have a warmer feel to it. So uh, you just keep practicing. If you find at first you don't succeed, then just try, try again. Alright, got the F done, and now we'll work on the G. And the little piece that comes out right there. Do that part of the circle and move my hand where I can pull the other part. You'll find that your hand is more comfortable and you're more comfortable pulling a curve a certain way. So uh, feel free to position your body and hand as needed. Sometimes it's easier to turn the paper, um, but for the sake of this video, I'm trying to keep the paper straight. but it's certainly okay to do that. Okay to move the paper as you need to get the angle you need. All right, that H was pretty easy, and the I is a lot like an H on its side, so it's going to be very much the same. Do the verticals and now the horizontals. And now on the J, finish up this top first. See if I can pull this little curve now. Just move nice and slowly around there. And the K, excellent. So we can finish that up. And let's go ahead and finish up the horizontals on the K, and we'll have that row done. One more piece right there. All right, moving on to the L. Do our verticals and our horizontals. And another vertical. See, it doesn't really matter which one you do first. I like to alternate, actually, because uh, it just 
becomes more interesting that way. Sometimes I'll do all the verticals and sometimes I'll do some of them. And now fill in the horizontals on the M. And uh, I really like the way that M looks. It's a friendly M. Gonna get a different angle here to pull these lines. And go ahead and finish up that N. All right, so here's a little tricky one. The the, oh, the center, I can use my fingers and uh, just cut those curves like that. On the upper part, it's going to be more of a wrist and finger combination. And I'm going to pick up and do basically a quarter of the circle at a time. And reposition each time to do the other quarter. And uh, that's pretty good. That bottom quarter was a little flat right there, but uh, I've already inked it in, so I'm just going to roll with it. I can tell you that just takes practice, practice, practice. And we got done with that P, and now we're cutting the inside of the Q. And I like the way that Q looks, too. So it's very much like the O cutting part of the circle with a different angle each time. So, excellent. Got another row done. And uh, now... We're going to go ahead and move on to the R. So again, any time in here, if you feel like you need to stop the video so you can do the part of the lesson and then turn it back on, then uh, feel free to do so. This video is to benefit you, and, and you can take all the time you need to do this. So I see here how I'm just doing one part of this at a time. You want that hand to feel comfortable? Yeah, I thought I'd be brave there and try to finish that curve, and it came out pretty well. T, an easy letter after that S again. The U, pretty straightforward. A little curve down there. Here we're going to go halfway. And we'll go ahead and try to run that all the way around. Sometimes you can do that. And the P, a pretty simple letter. Really, the rest of the letters going forward, um, I think relatively easy compared to some of the rounded letters we've had to tackle. Just taking care to do one little piece at a time here. All right, there's your W. On to the X. And just filling in those horizontals. Two more letters to go. We can make it.
Almost done with the Y. Looking forward to the Z as our last letter. There we go. Horizontals. I like these diagonals. I'm going to make that just stick out as long as the end of the letter. And there's the Z. So basically there we've got our whole alphabet. I'm just looking over each letter to see if we missed anything or I forgot to fill something in and uh, just all the way A through Z. So now we can put that Sharpie aside and we're going to use the kneaded eraser and go ahead and erase the pencil lines. And you can see how nicely this cleans up. Got too much graphite there in the uh, kneaded eraser, so I'll fold it over and it will pick up still more until that kneaded eraser gets really black and full of graphite. At that point, pretty much just go buy another one. And for the most part, it doesn't leave much eraser garbage. Um, as much as I'm erasing here, I do have some. Dust that off a little bit um, with my hand, although a paintbrush would probably be a better way to do it. Um, I see a little piece there that I need to touch up. A little piece there to touch up. And we'll call that done. So have fun drawing your block letters.